Good morning to everybody. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Slamir Wolf, uh, and I'm a CEO of AV System. I will try to be time efficient. I hope that you had a great morning today. And today I will try to share some um, information on our views, basically, what you should do if you want to build um, a scalable IoT services. A uh, few words about our company. Basically, we are committed to the device management services. IV System is the Polish company we are based um, in Krakow, in Poland, Central Europe. We have the offices around the world. Here in the US, we have the office in uh, Boston. Uh, basically, my colleague Will Jan is the president of Americas. Uh, Will, maybe you can stand up. We would like to talk to Will. As said, we have the stand um, very close to us. We have 150 people uh, in the company, more than 100 customers acting globally. We're on the market for 13 years. And I, as I said, we are specialized in expertise in the device management solution. Over those 13 years, we uh, engage with many tier one uh, telco customers. You know, among, among our um, customers, we have Telefonica, we have Claro America, America Mobile, we have uh, Vodafone, T-Mobile as well as uh, the customer in the US. The largest customer in the US basically of AV system is AT&T. Uh, we deliver to AT&T basically two products which are pretty interesting um, in terms of today's topic. Our flagship product for the IoT device management called Coyote, Coyote IoT device management, is the platform used by AT&T for the device management of the IoT terminals. It's integrated with the AT&T over some issue with the phones. Uh, AT&T Dataflow, I hope that you know the solution from AT&T. And the AT&T Amox, Amox is the platform for the tracking uh, asset services. Uh, we delivered for the AT&T also the um, interoperability, interoperability platform, the certification platform. So basically all OEM, ODMs, um, one wanting to deliver the devices for AT&T network uh, needs to be certified uh, from the device uh, management uh, point of view uh, with, our, uh, with our platform. One can ask basically what are the ingredients for the good IoT service? A good or bad, any kind of the IoT service. So uh, first of all you need to have connectivity. I believe that the market today is going towards the cellular IoT, so to the most um, popular, basically two, the only two standards which would we have, uh, LT, CADM1 or narrowband IoT. We have uh, also uh, the standards used uh, using the unlicensed band like Sigfox or LoRa, but this is not our focus today. So you need to have devices, sometimes you need to have devices, basically IoT is about devices, it's hard to offer and deliver IoT service without the devices. Once you have the devices, one can ask basically uh, how I can manage the, the devices. So we at IV System believe that um, the particular and mandatory um, tool to deliver and to build the working and scalable uh, IoT services is the device management um, solution. So basically if you have devices, anything above 50, right? Because if you have the network of the devices um, below 50 pieces, basically you can do it on your own, you can do it manually. But if you have bigger network, you need to have the solution which will help you to manage those devices. Once you have all of those free, then you can think about the application, right? Uh, application which is um, frequently considered also as a kind of the IoT platform. Uh, the IoT platform is a kind of buzzword today for a lot of companies on the market delivering IoT platforms. You can easily count um, almost uh, three or four, 400 companies claiming that they have the IoT platforms, but IoT platform is so fuzzy word. Um, you, need to, you need to think in terms of application. Once you have the, that, we can, we can talk about the data pro processing. So, uh, why do we get care about the device management. Why we say that the device management is uh, important? Basically when I founded the company 13 years ago and we started to play with the device management, um, nobody considered the device management as something really hot. The device management was a kind of a service 
or uh, a kind of the functionality which was delivered and demanded only by the telco. Because if we uh, go back 10 years, um, backward, only the telco and the telecommunication operators uh, were a kind of the industry requiring the device management solution because it was the only industry using the devices at scale, right? The same or similar type of devices uh, used for delivery of the broadband services. Um, I believe that most of us even um, don't see the examples of the device management services or the device management applications which are, um, which are around. Uh, two years ago, uh, we had a pretty bad um, weather situation here in uh, in US. It was the Hurricane Irma, more or less, you know, same time two years ago, end of August, beginning of September. And uh, it was pretty hot news uh, around the Tesla, about the Tesla, what they did. Uh, I don't know if, if, if it was Elon or, you know, somebody from uh, his advisors, but Tesla remotely upgraded the battery in the Tesla S models. As you know, the Tesla had in that time to model, uh, model S one with the 60 uh, kilowatts hours uh, capacity and the better but more expensive uh, model with the 75 uh, kilo, kilo, uh, kilowatts hour capacity, right? So the Tesla over the, over the air upgraded the capacity of the battery of the car just letting the people go from the zone of danger. So it's basically device management, right? They literally change the configuration of the car. They, um, I'm not sure if it was related to that firmware upgrade or some configuration, but they unlock additional hidden um, power in the car, right? So the people using the Tesla 60 uh, kilowatts hours were able to get additional 30 or 40 miles of range. So, and the similar similar thing we have if we speak about the device management in the IoT. So, if we have devices which are distributed most probably around the globe or in the quite on, on the quite big area, basically the devices which are quite cheap. Uh, so cheap that it's not profitable basically to send engineer to do something with them. We need to have the solution which will help us to manage them, to maintain them, right? And such a device management solution can be used for um, a couple of the use cases. So one of them is uh, device un onboarding. So everything what is related to uh, onboarding the device, to prepare the device to serve the service to the customer, a device configuration, applying security patches. Security is also pretty important for the IoT. If everything is going to be connected to the net, uh, I rather would like to be sure that you know the device, the asset or kind of the intelligent gadget which I have, which I carry, um, will not uh, create a kind of a security hole. FOTA, the name and the, and the kind of the word which um, uh, you should be familiar with. Uh, so uh, the firmware over the air. From time to time, uh, the device vendor, device manufacturer is releasing the new firmware version. And that firmware version needs to be applied on the device. Uh, so it's one of the basic, really basic capabilities of the device management solution. Uh, once we have all of them, we can talk about some proactive maintenance. So if we have the big population of the devices, we can collect the data from the devices and try to, in a smart way, predict when the device is going to break, when the um, battery is going to die. So uh, we are able to predict basically to optimize our costs. Do we have any other reason to think about the device management? Uh, such a boring stuff. Um, we realized one day ago, uh, sometime, sometime ago, that there is very similar um, business model, very similar offering in another industry. And basically, uh, it's, uh, it's called insurance. So it's called insurance. If you have the device management, you can be sure that one day, if something happens, you have the tool, you have the tooling at your hands uh, to fix it, right? So, you know, the device management may not be used for many days, but one day, if you really need to change the configuration of your network, the solution is there, so we are prepared. So the similar thing like with insurance, right? We are paying for that, 
uh, if you are not using it, you are pretty happy, right? Because if you need to use your insurance, it means that something happened. So similar thing with the device management. And how we can scale? This is the question of our today presentation. What we should do basically to scale our IoT service? So, first of all, I believe we should follow industry standards. Number one, there is no need to invent the wheel from the scratch. Uh, there are many uh, smart people around, uh, a lot of smart companies around, and basically the industries which are um, utilizing the standards around, like telco. Uh, we should uh, consider the interoperability, right? Uh, another key word today on the IoT, uh, I IoT landscape. If we had the, the devices and we are building the IoT service, I wouldn't recommend to go um, for the non-vendor agnostic solution. For example, with the devices which can be connected only to the one cloud provi provider. One day you want to change the cloud provider and basically you might have a problem. So the interoperability and the security, of course, the third one. So I would say that those are the three ingredients to ensure the good um, foundation for building the scalable IoT IoT service. So if we come to the industry standard, because I said that from our point of view it's, it's very important, we believe it's very important and as the company specialize in the device management, um, we are actively developing the standard which is called lightweight machine to machine. Um, this is the standard which is already accepted, approved by the largest tier one service providers around the world. So as I said at the beginning, we work with AT&T here in the US, but not only AT&T is using lightweight machine to machine here in North America. We see a lot of tractions about the lightweight machine to machine on other markets like Japan, Australia, also Europe. So what is the lightweight machine to machine? I will uh, very briefly try to introduce this protocol to all of you which are not familiar. So the light machine to machine is the uh, protocol coming from OMA. Today is OMA spec work. OMA is the Open Mobile Alliance. It's a, um, a kind of the um, working group specification uh, group responsible for the specif uh, specifying the, the standards, the technical standards are coming from the telco industry. So uh, many years ago, we specified and defined OMA-DM, the protocol which is still used, uh, for example, uh, in uh, all handset, which we, which we have. Uh, automotive industry is still using OMA-DM today for, for photo, for upgrading the, the car uh, software. Uh, there are a couple of the benefits of using live machine machine. First of all, the protocol was designed um, um, with the IoT in mind, so basically everything, what is the constraint, the connect, you know, constraint related to the connectivity and the battery life, uh, and the throughput of the network uh, below 10 kilobits per second. Uh, what what are the benefits of the light machine? Machine, uh, as you see, basically it's very power efficient. Number one, number two, it can use both uh, the IP network, non-IP delivery network uh, for the Lightweight Machine Machine One that standard, the latest one, as well as we can use the text messages, for example, to wake the device up, right? So if we have the IoT device which is sleeping, just to uh, save battery, you can basically send the text message over the cellular network to wake the device up. So this is the, the only standard which defines this kind of the activity. From the helicopter view, the stack of the library machine to machine. So we have the whole the logic, uh, which is defined by the standard. So the good thing is that basically uh, the different devices using the standard um, uh, compatible with the library machine to machine can be easily out of the box supported. But any kind of the device management platform also supporting library machine to machine. Cope constraint application protocol, which is used as a transportation layer, and UDP, which is much more efficient than the TCP protocol used, for example, by MQTT. Light machine to machine defines also uh, interfaces for different use cases. So again, this is, uh, this is something what we get free of charge. Another uh, advantage of light machine to machine 
um, it defines the concept of data model. Sometimes it's not a new concept because several of our protocols um, use exactly the same concept like mentioned uh, previously on DM or even the TR69, another telco protocol coming from the broadband industry. The good thing about the data models here is that the ODM or the OEM or even another company can define their own specific data model so we can uh, basically extend the number of the parameters we would like to support. Such data model can be presented later on in, 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 um, um, in the platform. This is a screenshot taken from our device management platform, the Coyote, the same solution used by AT&T today. So the data model can be presented to the user or to the administrator or to the technician in the in the pretty um, simple way. Lightweight machine to machine brings also the concept of the gateways uh, to the industry. So basically, the the simple gateway can combine also other connectivity like the Bluetooth, Z-Wave, Zigbee, this kind of stuff. And the latest update of the protocol, um, we, we call it lightweight machine to machine, brings a few uh, pretty important uh, technical improvements. So first of all, COB over TCP, uh, bindings to the uh, low power uh, networks uh, like the no IP data delivery and uh, additional encodings. What I would like to highlight is um, um, the difference between the light machine, light machine to machine machine and MQTT. It's very important to keep in mind that the MQTT uh, is not a device management protocol, right? MQTT is pretty popular, it's an old protocol, it's very famous, it's very simple, right? So literally you can take MQTT library and um, have it up and running in less than half an hour. What's the issue of the MQTT? The issue is that it doesn't guarantee and it doesn't bring you any kind of the compatibility. So anytime you need to code and you need to develop, you need to design your own logic, your own processes from the scratch, right? If you have one device using MQTT and you have another device using MQTT, basically it's completely different world. So this is number one and the most important difference. Sometimes the MQTT is as a, as a protocol is used by the cloud providers because both Microsoft in the Azure cloud and Amazon in the AWS cloud use MQTT, but it's not the way to go for the proper device management. So what kind of uh, issue you can consider to be solved with the lightweight machine to machine? Number one, it delivers standardized photo, fever over VA, right? So if you have lightweight machine to machine terminal and lightweight machine to machine cap cap capable platform, the server side, basically the photo is no longer your problem. You can rather think about the policies, how the new firmware should be applied, whether you know the new firmware should be applied in the cascade weight or basically applied only a particular number of the devices but it's so simple simple basically the, the the platform with the light machine to machine gives you the full auto discovery of the device capabilities so we can say it's a plug and play um, additional interfaces for uh, remote management and remote configuration and the very important thing and interesting thing due to the um, Due to the nature of the protocol and the design, we can send the telemetry data, the monitoring data, uh, to the server side. So this is, this is how um, the deployment for AT&T has been done. All the data, not on. Uh, so basically, Lightweight Machine to Machine is used for the photo for management of the devices, but in the same time, Lightweight Machine to Machine is used to transport the telemetry data from the devices to the central to the central side. A lot of features which. Uh, Basically, we can discuss here longer, but if you're interested, as, um, as I said, come to our stand related to, the, uh, to the, our platform, so the remote configuration, user management, policy management, workflows, tasks. Basically, you know, uh, we brought uh, our 12 year experience in the device management in this product, so I believe that we can um, cover at least 99% of the use cases, uh, no matter from which industries uh, they come. Uh, one important thing which I wanted also to mention, uh, AV System is considered as a, as a leading company of the Light Machine Machine Initiative. Uh, a year ago we've been mentioned as the uh, market leader 
in the Leiden machine to machine uh, by the Magnation uh, reporting group. Uh, this year uh, among uh, more than 15 companies which were evaluated in the report. Uh, basically on this graph uh, we are hidden under the name so uh, we are vendor number 11. As you see in the ranking, uh, Magnation um, consider AV system with the device management solution specialized in IoT device management as a number two player on the market. And for at least four years, we actively participate, number one, in designing the standard, and number two, testing our implementation with and other companies because certainly um, it's our interest to develop the market and uh, to spread the information, the popularity of, the, of this technology. So uh, this is the result from the last year of test first. So kind of even when different companies are bringing the server and client side implementation to verify uh, the interoperability level. So as you see, um, um, our end-to-end -end proposition uh, got the better score than Nokia and Ericsson. Uh, before I finish, I just would like to mention as well that we have open source library uh, supporting library machine to machine, it's called Android. You can find it uh, on the GitHub. Um, uh, so uh, it's pretty, I would say it's uh, most of the simple way to start the, the journey with, with this technology. So, uh, this is all I wanted to share with you today. If you have any questions, feel free. Uh, if the questions will bring, uh, will come to your mind a bit later, we are here just uh, next to this, uh, this space, so feel free to come to us and talk. Thank you. Any questions? So you mentioned lightweight machine to machine, but uh, did you consider one machine to machine, the other protocol made by HC? And the other question is, are you using lightweight machine to machine on the phone to manage the phone at at and or to manage other mm -hmm. devices? Okay, so the one machine to machine is not the protocol, it's rather the concept, you know, taking all different uh, ideas, specification, and trying to umbrellaize uh, the direction and the specification of the IoT platform. So I would say that light machine machine fits to the one machine to machine concept, number one. And to answer your second question for the AT&T, no, the phones today still are powered by the OMADM. So the light machine to machine is used by AT&T with our platform only to uh, empower IoT devices. So uh, the two or three weeks ago, the AT&T together with Circum announced the availability of the uh, new device. It's called Tracker. A very small disc this size box, uh, which you can attach basically to the container or the engine if you are buying and you want to track basically where your where your thing is. So it's a device uh, which can uh, send the data once a day at least two years, and the light machine machine is used to control that device for the photo to configure that device and also as a channel to send the telemetry data from our platform to the core. Uh, network element of the at &T. Thank you once again. Have a good afternoon.